Hello family, I'm glad to share on God's word with y'all. This is another day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, be glad in it. Let us just have our hearts stirring for the word that we would be hungry and thirsty uh, and and just wanting to sharpen each other, wanting to learn, wanting to receive, wonder, desiring to just grow as the body and help people come to the truth. Part four was about the schemes of the devil, the enemy whetstone. This is part five. This is the counterfeit armor of God or the armor of Satan, if you will. Now let's get into it. Father God, I just thank you for your word, your truth. I thank you for your for your grace, though we don't deserve it. I thank you for the opportunity of sharing, though I was unworthy to do so. I thank you for all your blessings, all your gifts. I thank you for the opportunity to that and, and that I use your gifts and you train me to use it for you rather than myself. Then I just ask for a denial of self and further surrender, further clinging to you in your ways, and there would be less of me. I just ask that you would take over, that you would speak this truth, you would speak this message, and that you would get the glory, and that the hearts and the ears would be ready to listen. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right. So, we all know there is a spiritual warfare. But many of us don't know that we use, we can use the word of God. See, the enemy uses it. Remember, he has false teachers. He disguises himself. And then the servants of God use it. He can persuade people that they are serving God, but destroying Christ's church. He can deceive us in order to do his bidding while we think we are on the way of salvation, the way of paradise. You know whose life shows us this? Acts 8. And Saul approved of his execution. That is Stephen's execution. And there arose on that day a great persecution against the church in Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria. Except the apostles. Devout men buried Stephen and made great lamentation over him. But Saul was ravaging the church and entering house after house. He dragged off men and women and committed them to prison. And then in Acts 9.3, he was going to persecute the church in Damascus. See, Paul that he was a warrior. He was a Pharisee. He knew and studied the law of God. And he thought he understood Christ. He thought his followers were God's enemy. And I tell you, if we are not born again, if we are not serving Christ, we too are God's enemy. And we too fight against his church. How do I say so? As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. He replied, What? No, 
No, no, no, no, no. Paul was serving God. Saul. He was going after people who falsely proclaimed Jesus. Not the God their religion taught. Not the God of their de denomination. No. This, this man who, who died on a cross because he claimed he was God. That, that, that man was blasphemy. Paul thought he understood who Jesus was. And when we persecute, when we deny, when we constantly take every little thought of somebody and just try to dismiss them, without even looking for their fruit, without even asking the Spirit of God. Who are we persecuting? We, 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 you know what you see in this story? You should be very careful on who you are just throwing out because it's very possible that it is Christ and the person he sent that you are destroying in your mind and in your heart. Do you know how we get free from this? See, next week I'm going to read Ephesians 6. And talk about the body armor, the, the armor of God. But the Spirit guided me and, and, and put this together. And I'm going to share it. And I pray that we all have ears to hear. And that we would receive this. And we would dwell on this. And we stop looking at little situations to get out of hearing the word of God and just trying to live our own life. There is a spiritual battle. And there is an armor of God that Satan counterfeited. And to keep you comfortable to keep you from growing he will be sure he keeps that on you therefore take off the whole armor of Satan that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm stand therefore having loosened off the belt of deceit and taken off the breastplate of conceitedness and your feet bare from the idleness of the gospel of comfort in all circumstances put down the shield of assumption with which you cannot extinguish any of the flaming darts of the evil one and take off the helmet of security and put down the sword of the enemy see it starts with that deceit And it ends with that security. Your mind is secure in your thoughts. And it says, and with that, what you don't realize, look at this deceit. Second Peter. 3 16 and it talks about okay about Paul and his letters and and the wisdom that's given to him and, and Paul and it says or in Peter's it says there are some things in them that are hard to understand which the ignorant and unstable twist to their own destruction as they do the other scriptures so 
there, and then Ephesians 4. It says Ephesians 17-22 Now this I say and testify in the Lord that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardness of heart. They have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. But that is not the way you learn Christ. Assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus to put off your old self. The truth in Jesus is to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God and true righteousness and holiness. You have to read that slowly. We can be deceived. We can be taught wrong because the futilities of our minds. We can be taught as Colossians 2.28 or 2.8 says that uh, to let no one capture you with Empty Colossians. Here it is. See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. So if you are captured by these things by these teachings if you are deceived and you have this twisted scripture which satan knows the scripture he will use the word of god as his sword because of the mind that is forming the word of god through the former ignorance through the old self and he's using that sword to destroy. And it all bases on. This armor. That we are wearing. As we see. In Psalm 120. David's crying out. Deliver me O Lord. From lying lips. From a deceitful tongue. Deliver me from my own lying lips, my own deceitful tongue, corrupt from the ways of this life, the ways of this world, the ways that I was taught down by people who were also captured by philosophy rather than Christ, by tradition rather than Christ. And you know that deceit ended up making me feel secure. Secure and oh, I'm 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 going to heaven. I'm good. I I don't need I can I don't need I can be comfortable. It's the gospel of comfort. I don't need to let anything go. I don't need to let God transform me. I don't I don't need to do anything spiritually, but perhaps gather once a week. I can be idle. In the spirit. I can. See. I can assume the shield of assumption. Yeah. We got to protect ourselves. With the belt of truth. And be sure not to deceive. And this is why. We need to be preaching the Holy Spirit. And repentance. Because it's the Holy Spirit. That brings us into the truth. The shield of assumption. 
we use, we can use to try to back off everything. Like, like Saul, he persecuted this church because he had this shield of assumption. There's no way that this could be the true church of God. Because I have it all figured out. My heart's right with them because, because, man, I've been educated. I, I, I got circumcised at eight years old. I've done all this. I'm right with God, so they must be wrong. Because I followed these, these teachers. I, I, they know the truth. You can't have anybody else come. You know, Romans 16, 17, the same person, Saul, says, I appeal to you, brothers, to now, Paul, to watch out for those who cause divisions and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught. Avoid them, for such persons do not serve our Lord Christ, but their own appetites. And by smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the hearts of the naive. See, there is many who are pretending to serve Christ. And perhaps their own heart had, was naive. And then it became secure. And then they became conceited. And then they started this pursuit Thinking it's about serving me. And. With that. See there's a doctrine that we have to teach. And we have to be sure not to be deceived. But again. Be sure not to assume. Because. The Christ that we are to follow is a Christ of the renewal of mind. The Christ that gives you power over your sin. The Christ that died for you. So you no longer have to worry about these things of life that cause you to stumble, to fall, to slip up. Because the more you're thinking of your effort, that's where you slip. Because once you feel not good enough, see, that's where the helmet of security comes in. I'm secure because I've done these things. And yet, I'm not saved because I didn't realize that I'm a sinner that cannot save myself. Otherwise, Christ need not to die. These parts of the body they all go together to keep us stuck to keep us shot by the flaming darts so I want to make sh oh the God of peace will soon Crush Satan under your feet. And there's that key right there. Who's going to crush Satan? He says that he will give us the power. That we will crush serpents. Yet. Okay. If we crush the serpent. Say you have an addiction. You have some kind of trouble. And you crush it. Without the power of God. I heard this recently. A, a, a serpent. You can crush it. And then the ven venom can affect you. And grow into your body. And. Uh, slowly. Slowly kill you. 
spiritually. It has to be the God of peace who crushes Satan. It is God who does it, not you. Your efforts. See, when you feel, oh, I did this, I achieved this. And then you get something else. And your mind keeps going there. Your mind keeps going there. You get something else worse and worse. Harder. Then you're going to start trying to crush Satan again. And you don't achieve it. Because you think it's you who does it. And then you feel like a failure. And then you're the one who feels crushed. Because it has to be the God of peace. Um then first Corinthians or no, we're gonna get to that later. So let's now Talk, we talked about deceit. Now let's take a talk about the breastplate of conceitedness. Let's look at Luke 18. Well, before that, we're going to look at Isaiah 64. It says, we gotta make sure I read the right stuff. Five through seven. You meet him who joyfully works righteousness. Those who remember you in your ways, behold, you were angry and we sinned. In our sins, we have been a long time. And shall we be saved? We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us. And have made us melt in the hand of our in iniquities. We can get so caught. In our own righteousness. In our own thoughts. In our own ways. That we don't call upon him. And take hold of him. And then he hits his face. Does this not look familiar? Let's look at Daniel 3. If I don't pass it over and over again. Okay, Daniel. Wrong way. Okay, Daniel 3. So, you'll have King Nebuchadnezzar putting Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the furnace. And then in verse 28, he noticed the Son of Man. He, there was four in the fire, and they were set free. Nebuchadnezzar answered and said, it, the hair of their heads was singed, their cloaks were not harmed, and no smell of fire came upon them. Nebuchadnezzar answered and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him, and set aside the king's command, and yielded up their bodies, rather than serve and worship any god except their own god. Therefore I make a decree. Any people, nation, or language that speaks anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be torn limb for limb, and their houses laid in ruins. 
for there is no other God who is able to rescue in this way. Although, what he didn't notice, he's seen God. He's seen the Son of Man. But he didn't realize he's the God of mercy. And then King Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, to all peoples, nations, and language that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied to you. It has seemed good to me to show the signs and wonders that the high, most high God has done for me. How great are his signs, his mighty, his wonders, his kingdom is everlasting kingdom and his dominion endures from generation to generation okay so he's seen a witness God he's praising him now let's look go to chapter 4 verses 1 oh yeah 1 through 3 I did that 10 through 13 shortly after um sorry 28 through 32. All this came upon. Well, 27 says, Therefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable to you. Break off your sins by practicing righteousness and your iniquities by showing mercy to the oppressed, that there may perhaps be a lengthening of your prosperity. All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar at the end of twelve months. He was walking on the roof of the royal palace of Babylon. And the king answered and said, Is this not the, this great Babylon, which I have built by my own mighty power as a royal residence and for the glory of my majesty? While the words were still in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken. The kingdom has departed from you, and you shall be driven from among men. And your dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. And you shall be made to eat grass like oxen. This happened till he humbled himself. But I tell you the truth. He's seen a way of God. He's been warned of the ways of God. But then, he didn't let go of the former life. He let conceitedness get in the way. Then he had to be humble. <laughs> Though he's seen God, he didn't have time. He, he, he did not devote himself. See, like it says, practice righteousness. And your inquiry is by showing mercy to the oppressed. He would have been given a blessing, a lengthening of his prosperity. But he did not give the glory to God. He gave the glory to himself. And we can end up with all these giftings, we can end up growing in the church. We can end up re receiving such wisdom. And we grow and we be like, look at all this I've done. Look at all this I can teach. Look at all this I can know. And he start to take those gifts and use them upon himself, yourself. Rather than praising God. We can be given things. And use it. Through our flesh. Praising ourselves. And. Uh, we. Can forget. And become conceited. Well, let's look at Luke 18. Okay. 
He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that were righteous and treated others with contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee standing by himself prayed thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes all that I get. But the tax collector... Oh. So he was exalting himself. Thanking God that he's not like other men. Because I do all of this. His security. His praise. His work. Was what was based on him. Jesus says something very or elsewhere where it says okay John 8 39 okay they answered him Abraham is our father Jesus said to them if you were Abraham's children, you would be doing the works Abraham did. But now you seek to kill me. A man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. This is not what Abraham did. You are doing the works your father did. They said to him, We were not born of sexual immorality. We have one father, even God. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I have came from God. And I am here. I am. I came not of my own accord, but he sent me. Why do you understand? not understand what I say? It is because you cannot bear to hear my word. You are of your father, the devil. And your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which one of you convicts me of sin? If I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? Whoever is of God hears the words of God. The reason why you do not hear them is that you are not of God. So they became conceited. There was no room in their hearts to hear anything more. See, if we were right with God, based on our own actions, Christ knew not to die. They felt righteous based on the family they came from. The society they grew in. They were secure based in their mind, based on how they grew. And in the areas they grow. And based on what they've done. Rather than what Christ has done. Knowing that we have to be saved we have to receive salvation Christ is salvation if you become secure but not feel saved then you will easily become insecure why because the storms of life would come your way and you will sh shrink back your security 
is based on one thing when things go well your security is based on your human effort but if you fully believe in what God has done you felt his mercy your mind is full of his grace In which that is how you treat others the same way. Jeremiah 9.23 says, Thus says the Lord, Let not the wise man boast in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man boast in his might. Let not the rich man boast in his riches. But let him who boasts boast in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who practices tithing, fasting, destruction of those who sin, feeling righteous based on what he does? No. I am the Lord who practices steadfast love, justice, and righteousness in the earth for in these things I delight, declares the Lord. He delights in true justice. And true justice knows all I have comes from the Lord. True justice knows what do we have that we have not been given. True justice knows deep down okay I had to do these sacrifices because I also have sin true justice practices love never ending that is truly honest in every area let's look at Matthew 13 14 now Matthew 13 says this indeed in their case the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled that says you will indeed hear but never understand and you will indeed see but never perceive for this people's hearts have has grown dull and with their ears they can barely hear and their eyes they have closed lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their eyes and understand with their heart and churn and i would heal them see in Jeremiah 17, it also says the human heart is desperately wicked. Who can understand it? Many people think, God knows I have a good heart. God knows. No. God says the heart has grown dull. You can't receive, you can't understand because you become secure and comfortable. You become conceited in the sense that well I'm living good enough I've done what I needed to get to heaven I don't need nothing more I don't need to learn more I just continue in these basic works and you know we have to understand with our heart because that's how we get healed. That's how we get healed with our sin. That's how we get healed with our sicknesses. That's how we get healed with all those things that constantly destroys us. Because we start to feel this way about ourselves and we treat others the same way. And then we can't hear, we can't understand, though we're trying to. 
Um, okay. In Galatians 6. Well, it says, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own work. And then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor. For each will have to bear his own load. Okay. Your boasting is not based on seeing someone doing better or worse than you. You're boasting. And I I also meant this to be with the, the, the comfort. See, the shoes of peace. We can feel like, okay, because nothing wrong is going on with me. I'm not facing any hardship. I'm not facing any trouble. That means I'm good with God. Because I'm having peace. See that's why. Comfort is the counterfeit to peace. Because peace. That God meant. Is you're amongst your enemies. You're amongst hardship. You're amongst trouble. And yet you're still grounded. And you're still glorifying God through it. Comfort. That's why it's comfort. Because we think that God is about having no problems. Peace is about having no problems. It's, it's having everything bad go away. And, uh, and that really connects with the shield of assumption. Where it's like... Okay, God, I want to go through this testing or this trial because then I did all what I did. I'm not going to face anything. Oh, God would not have me go out to reach that type of person. You know, the shield of assumption also does. It gets itself deceived and put on the belt of truth or deceit. It assumes just because they claim God. They are not a wolf in sheep clothing. Just because they claim Jesus. That they are not a wolf in sheep clothing. When the Bible tells us in the last days. Many will rise up. Many false teachers. Many false prophets. Many that. Speak. As it says in Timothy. The itching ears. The itch ears. We must test our own work. Not get comfortable. Not be idle in the word. But see how you're loving. See how you're growing. See how you're facing conviction. Um, because he wants our boasting... To be that we understand and know him. And that's not based on. Thing, reading the word in a way that justifies our actions. No it's it's reading the word in a way that helps us grow. And draw nearer to him. And to serve and bring others to Christ. You, you, to, to the point where you start to boast. Because. Man. I used to do all these things in the past. And I thought I would be stuck in them. And yet. God. Used them in the way. In a way. To set. Others free. Therefore the boasting. Is, is understanding. Okay. I receive mercy. 
I understand him. I know him. They can receive mercy. I don't have to be. I'm not supposed to stay comfortable. I'm supposed to put on the mind of Christ. See the salvate. I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay. Um, let's look at 1 Corinthians 4. We're gonna we're talking about uh and your feet bear from the idleness of the gospel of comfort. So first Corinthians four So and three Paul's addressing people who think in their right with God and they dismiss so many people based on who they follow, who the teacher they learn from. And in chapter 4, Paul, who was once a Pharisee of Pharisees persecuting the church, he says, and says this, Six through eight. I have applied all these things to myself and Apollos for your benefit, brothers, that you may learn by us not to go beyond what is written, that none of you may be puffed up in favor of one against the other. Another. Don't go beyond the word. So you won't be puffed up. Hey, but do you, you know how he does. You know how he does things. Now you haven't even learned. Now you don't. You don't do this. You don't do that. And look. Look how. You, okay, I'm getting into assumption. Hold on. Now, hidden. Okay. Be puffed up in favor. I don't need... I have my own church. I don't need you to pray for me. I'm already good. I got my own system. I got my own people. Oh, that's Christ's church. He should be the head. And his task... What he's doing is pouring out the Spirit to bring the church together. But anyways, and, and we could be like, oh, well, you don't know this. So you dismiss people because you are conceited in your heart of what you know or what you learned. For who sees anything different in you? What do you have that you did not receive? If then you received it, why do you boast as if you did not receive it? Like we just talked about. And you're like, look, I, 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 I achieved all these things. And see, and then as we forget, if we if we start to think and boast as if we didn't receive it, but we earned it by our own ways, by our human effort, and then you start to think that that other person may have not received it, and we we start to dismiss. Already, you have all you want. Already you have become rich. Without us, you have become kings. And with that, you did reign so that you might share the rule with you. For I think that God has exhibited us apostles at last, as last of all, like men sentenced to death, because we have become a spectacle to the world, to angels and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak. But you are strong. You are held in honor. But we in disrepute. To the present hour we hunger and thirst. We are poorly dressed and buffeted and homeless. And we labor, working with our own hands. When reviled we bless. When persecuted we endure. When slandered we are cheat and treat. We have become and are still like the scum of the world. The refuse of all things. Do you see... How this gospel of comfort could cause people to just be like, you see what you're going through? 
Man, that's not prosperity. You did that. That's that's not God. You would not be suffering if that was God. I, I don't want to learn or listen to you because that's a little. I can't be comfortable with that. But realize, Paul had peace in his sufferings, and he rejoiced in them. And then they were conceited in their heart that they dismissed. They were secure based on what they have done, what teacher they followed. Rather than when the trials come, them feeling safe. That they were, because of Christ, that they can get through it. Um, Second Thessalonians three six through twelve. Three six through twelve. Now we commend you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you keep away from any brother who is walking in idleness and not in accord with the tradition that you received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us, because we were not idle when we were with you, nor do we eat anyone's bread without paying for it, but we with toil and labor we worked night and day, that we might not be a burden to any of you. It was not because we do not have the right but to give you in ourselves an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we would give you this command. If anyone is not willing to work, let him not eat. For we hear that some um, among you walk in idleness, not busy at work, but busy bodies. Now such pe persons we command and encourage in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. I want to recognize, okay, David and Bathsheba, his duty, he ended up comfortable. He stayed within the kingdom when he was about, he was supposed to go out into war. And you know what happened when he stayed comfortable? Rather than doing the duties as the word tells him to do, he ended up in temptation and sinning and even having a man killed to hide it. I tell you this because when we become comfortable, things creep in. When we become comfortable, we start to allow sin. We are comfortable in our sin because that's the gospel that we've been given. That's what we start to believe in our mind be based on this deceit. And uh, and then that... So let's look at uh, what I have for Psalm 36. Transgression speaks to the heart deep in it, or to the wicked deep in his heart. There is no fear of God before his eyes, for he flatters himself in his own eyes that his iniquity cannot be found out and hated. The words of his mouth are trouble and deceit. He has ceased to act wisely and do good. Like it's, it's, it's sharing here is it's when you don't fear the God, when you are not making, putting on the head, the helmet of salvation, which the meaning of Jesus is God is salvation. 
he's the head. He is your armor. You must have the might of Christ. You must fear him. Otherwise, yeah, you become comfortable. And that's the gospel that's starting to be spread with your feet. And uh, it becomes deceitful. And uh, you start to think, okay, that his iniquity cannot be found out and hate it. I can, you know, if your helmet's not in the head of Christ, if, if, if you're based in security, you don't think this will be found out. You don't think this is going to get shared on Judgment Day. It's, it's nothing. It's totally fine. It's not going to get exposed. It doesn't need to. Because this is the gospel of comfort. I'm... Jesus died for me to go to heaven. I don't need to do anything else. Maybe go to church, but I, I don't have to put my whole heart into it. Uh, what's Ephesians five? Or I think I did Ephesians five already. No, I didn't. Ephesians five. Okay, 15 through 18. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. But we have to be careful how we walk. We can't just become comfortable, but we have to grow and learn to be wise. We have to make the best use of our time rather than be conceited thinking we're all good with God. Because even if we believe it's based on His grace, we start to feel, okay, because I did these things that I'm right with Him. And yet, that's still based on the law. It has to be based on the Spirit of God. It has to be based on the work of the Holy Spirit. We have to be careful how we walk. The days are evil. We have to make best of the time. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. We can't just wait around till God's return. See, it's saying to test, like we read in Thessalonians. Examine your own work. Watch it. Watch, watch what you're doing. You need to understand the will of the Lord. Make the best of it. Best of your time. And that time is, is to do what God's work is. And what He's doing... Why he's patient is because he wants all to come to repentance. He wants people to come to him. And we're supposed to be a part of that work. But with this false armor, we're not going to do it. Because we're focused on us. Um, now let's... Okay. Whoever... Proverbs 18.9 Whoever is slack in his work is a brother to him who destroys. It's a brother to him who destroys. Satan destroys. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Whoever is slack in his work. So if you are just comfortable, if you are just sitting around doing you not giving up your formal ways of life 
Not being the light of the world, but just slack in your work. I'm all good. There's no problem. I didn't need to be saved. I just need to be secure. You are a brother to him who is destroys. You're destroying others because you're not showing this example. We read in Thessalonians of Paul showing an example. He worked and strived so he can he went amongst them to share the word of God, but part of sharing the word of God is not being idle. It is not slouching and relying on people, but it's serving people. Oh well I share the word of God, so I don't need to do anything. It says you, you you don't work, you don't eat. You have to show that example. And that example is showing an example. Jesus came down here to show an example. First Thessalonians 5. I don't Five, twelve 12-18 Okay, then it's saying We ask you brothers to respect those who labor among you And are over you in the Lord And admonish you And to esteem them very highly In love because of their work See And this goes first Learning from them and their labor That, that we... Labor. It's not the gospel of comfort. It's it's not. It's it's peace, and a peacemaker is gonna do whatever it takes to bring people in the Lord, so they can die to their iniquities and be born again. To stop the quarreling of enemies, to stop the cor the hostility of rivals. But that the Spirit of God, and that there would be no divisions, the Spirit of God would pour out among men and show people the work of Christ through love. Love in a way that you would never imagine. We have to respect them. We got to see people taking time to share the Word of God and respect them. Instead of be like, oh, I got my own teacher, I got my, yeah, I got enough. Man, perhaps God wants you to listen to them speak. Because that's an example. Putting no time limit, but serving with your whole heart. And we urge you, brothers, admonish the idol, encourage the faint-hearted, Help the weak. Be patient with them all. See that no one repays e anyone evil for evil. But always seek to do good to one another. And to everyone. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Now... Let's talk about the helmet of salvation, the helmet of security. Proverbs 18.2 A fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his opinion. And you know, and this opinion starts to, okay, measure of judgment you use will be used against you. You're living by your opinion. You're sealed of assumption. Trying to defend yourself. Just trying to defend your thoughts. Trying to defend your ideas. These things of your former life that you just mixed into the gospel. And you're just living by your opinion. Rather than the truth of God and his word. You want to put your own understanding into it. 2 Corinthians 10, 5 says, We destroy 
arguments and every lofty opinion, raise against the knowledge of God, and take every thought captive to obey Christ. So, we are supposed to destroy arguments in every lofty opinion. We are not supposed to walk by opinion. But truth. And again, this all comes from deceit. I can live and understand God my own way. No, no you can't. God intends on renewing your mind, changing your thoughts and your attitude. Proverbs 28:26. Whoever trusts in his own mind is a fool, but he who walks in wisdom will be delivered. We learn that Jesus Christ became wisdom itself. So if you walk with him as your head, your helmet of salvation, that you put on the mind of Christ. See, there is no opinions in this. There is this right here. 1 Corinthians 2. And I, and I, when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Go down. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the Spirit of that person which is in Him? So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. And we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. The natural person does not accept the things of the spirit of God, for they are folly to him. And he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. For who uh, has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. We are given the mind of Christ. We cannot understand these words. See, also what gets in the way of the mind of Christ. Is because we are secure in our thoughts and our ways and our opinions and our understandings. Look, Proverbs 18, 1, or Psalms 10, 4 says, In the pride of his face, the wicked does not seek him. All his thoughts are, there is no God. I am secure in my lifestyle. I am secure in my ways. I'm proud. My heart is conceited. I'm good enough. I don't need more. I'm, I, I'm comfortable. I don't need to be saved. I can use. I, I can live off my assumption of you. I have no openness to understand. You have to look and act this way. Man. Now let's do a further breakdown. Like said before, we cannot allow ourselves or our hearers or those around us to be deceived. And yet we cannot teach them to block themselves with assumption. The shield of faith is looking through people, through the Holy Spirit. Turning to God to help us discern whether someone is speaking of God or speaking of the devil. If someone is speaking of their former way of life, or speaking of the devil. We can't just assume because somebody doesn't fully understand or 
they're still growing because we have a constant renewal of the mind. See, we can be like, okay, well, that's 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 a false teaching right there. You're your false teacher. That assumption. You're blocking it off because you don't want to be convicted. You want to feel secure. You want to feel comfortable. But if you actually feel saved... The helmet of salvation. You're going to know. No matter. If you got every disease. Famine. If it's raining hellfire. God's got you. Because to live is Christ and die is gain. He will cover you. He will protect you. No disease or famine will touch you. But it depends. Is your mind on security or is it on salvation? Is your mind so, are you humble or are you so conceited in your heart, on your walk, that you are not making any room for anyone to teach you or help guide you? That like Paul, like Saul, you were destroying why do you persecute me? You are destroying Christ thinking you're doing the service of Christ. This shield of assumption? You're hidden by every single flaming dart of the evil one because our job is to bring people to Christ. No, 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 no. God would not have... Oh, I can't be around a somewhat... I could fall into drugs if I'm around somebody. Like, I, I could fall into that temptation. No, if you've been set free from it, God can use that. That's faith. God's going to use that to set them free. But you're so afraid. And you assume that you might fall out of the faith because you're secure. But you don't believe in your salvation. Christ saved us while we were sinners. And if you fully have his mercy engrafted into your mind. You don't need to defend yourself. You don't need to be afraid of every single person that's coming your way. You can be open to receive. You can be open to see someone serving God you can see their heart see you know the your bare, feet bare from the idleness we need to put on the gospel of peace the gospel of peace which is going to go out and share the word that we were sinners, but Christ died for us. And that he is going to renew us and transform us. If we don't understand, yeah, we need to take off the helmet of security. How how about a shield of assumption where uh, you start to think things? Okay, this 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 person. Okay, maybe he's not actually watching my my videos or he's pretending. Maybe uh, yeah, this this person I can't share with him. I think I think he's still struggling with 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 drugs. Oh, this this could happen if, man, God, I can, do you know the risk of this? You see how assumption gets in the way of faith? You see how much we try to defend ourselves, but rather use the sword of the enemy to destroy one another? 
because of our assumption. And yet we're destroying ourselves because we're not being open to listen. And all of this, take off that belt of deceit. Start looking into the truth. Start testing whoever you're hearing to. And stop taking one little thing from somebody and just throwing them out. Do you think we're supposed to be fully perfect? Well, then you haven't been into salvation. You're just secure to not live your own life, your old life. These things that you're trying to get rid of. If you have been in salvation. If somebody's speaking of Christ and his forgiveness and the message of the cross. Why do you have to defend against them? Because what you're doing, you are. You are. Our mindset against other people, especially when they are just trying to pour out their heart to bring people to Christ and set example, without limitation, you are being shot by the enemy. Because the enemy is trying to shoot you down before you receive what God's trying to tell you. He's trying to kill you. So what you're supposed to hear doesn't come in. I'm going to close with this. And I can talk more about each of these. But let's go to Philippians chapter 2. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. I tell you the truth. The enemy is trying to put this armor on you. So you don't serve like Christ. You must put on the mind of Christ. You must serve others. Without being afraid of what may happen. And that's supporting one another. That's listening. That's understanding. That's that's. That's being willing to hear. Because what Jesus is doing is he is gathering his children together. And when we refuse those children, we are doing exactly what Saul did. And when we assume that someone, because they are living that way, cannot be saved... First, we are not wearing our helmet of salvation. And we are not believing in the conversion of Saul to Paul. And also, if we have not taken up the former way of life, like we have spoken, see, we take up that helmet of salvation. And we become secure. We start to watch things. We start to do, we, we, you know, secure in comfort. We start to watch things. We start to do things. We start to listen. We we, we feel fine and we let in so the, the devil come into our life and overtake us and distract us. We have to let, we got to stop being comfortable. We got to let God, see peace in God is letting go of our sin. It is overcoming it. It's no longer be enslaved and in bondage to things. But unless we take off this armor and put on the new and train ourselves in the new. Because as, as David said, 
Saul was trying to put this armor on. He's like, I can't use that armor. I'm not trained in it. See, you got to take off the old armor. And yeah, you got to put the new armor in and train yourself into it. You got to go into the battle. And take courage. Otherwise, if you still keep any part of this old armor and not live according to what Christ did like he did giving his life for others out of faith serving others rather than just clinging to being God I, I don't need to help any but I'm already where I so I'll just stay on my throne I don't need these people that's not the example of Christ and what you're doing is you are being a Pharisee Saul and we must be redeemed from that And that shield of assumption, I tell you, if you put that up, you are keeping, and, and you're just so more focused on just like, well, that, that person's doing so much. No, that's the Antichrist. No, that's, he is a terrible, there is no hope for him. I'm just going to talk how bad he is, how much he does, how much he... you are not trusting in the gospel, the salvation that came onto the earth. Who died while we were enemies. And you are a being that enemy of God by acting that way. Don't assume someone cannot be saved. Do not be assumed that someone cannot receive mercy. Take off that armor. And trust in your salvation, which was received through mercy. Stop fighting for the enemy, thinking you're serving God. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your word, your truth. Man, just restore us. Bring us to reconciliation. Bring us to true understanding and wisdom because we, we, we don't know. We think we know. We think we understand Christ. But Paul even admitted, man, how differently I know him now. How different. Man, just renew us. Let us hear this word. Let us receive it. Let us take the conviction and repent and grow. We thank you. We thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, brothers and sisters. God bless you. I love you. Good night.